Hey everybody, um, today I want to start a series of videos um, highlighting ICF, which is insulated concrete form. Uh, it's a s expanded polystyrene forms that um, you fill in with concrete. They usually go from the footings to the roof line. They replace your outer walls, your outer insulation, and everything um, associated with that on the outside of a home. It gives you incredible thermal protection, very efficient house also. Uh, windproof up to 250 miles an hour so it's you know it can take almost any tornado it is a wonderful product it is cost effective right now beyond where it's ever been before because of the skyrocketing prices of softwood dimensional lumber this is about on par with a traditionally framed house right now the number one question I get when people are looking at this is how do you wire it so that's the first video I'm going to do is how you run wire in a solid wall it's not there's no stud spaces there's nothing it's really easy um, you don't really need a lot of specialty tools we do usually carry around a router or in this case a cheap Harbor Freight chainsaw um, and I will get into it's it's actually kind of fun <laughs> it's um, and that's it so I'm going to get into right now the nuts and bolts of ICF and how you wire it. So this is a partial form right here. I just wanted to kind of show you what's inside. Um, every eight inches you have a web. It's a injected molded plastic web. In while you're pouring, while you're building the ICF, it it acts as the structural portion of the form. It holds the concrete, the pressure of the wet concrete. Once the concrete is cured, it is providing the function of what traditional studs do. You can screw sheetrock right to this. You can put siding on the outside, brick, ties, stone, uh, wire lad. You can attach everything you do to wood right to this. And so you can see there's one every eight inches. So you can see they're like this. And it holds the rebar in these little tie, in these little brackets right here. There's, uh, depending on the thickness of the core, they make these in four, six, eight, 10, and 12 inch core. Most commonly we use six inch on houses, but uh, on a lot of our swimming pools when we're doing spillovers and we're holding back a lot of water pressure, we go with thicker core and there's a lot of other reasons to do that. But I just wanted to kind of show you what the inside looks like. Obviously that all gets filled in with concrete and then it is a uh, solid mass. So just kind of wanted to show you the nuts and bolts of what's inside before I get into how we wire. Okay, so like I said, the number one question we get on these is how you wire them because again, people that are thinking about it that have ever seen a house wired before, how are you going to put wire through a solid wall? So I'm going to kind of show you what we do is we take this chainsaw, almost all chainsaws have a little hole in the bar right here and we just screw a little wooden block on and we make sure that it, it bottoms out, as you can see, just before it hits the concrete and that enables us to just cut grooves in the wall. Um, where we want the wire to run and then we will cut out where the boxes go and it's pretty cool the way these are designed I can show you right here we take a regular size box and when it bottoms out at the concrete it's sticking out just enough to go through the sheetrock the sheetrocker as he's hanging just cuts around it like he does a traditional box and it's just embedded in there perfectly it's really well thought out I'll get into showing you guys how that's done right now what I have here is just a regular electric box single gang I pulled the nails out of it the ones that you normally nail into the studs so what I'm gonna do is just measure up off of the floor where we want them to go and then I'm just gonna simply trace it okay after we get that done I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in the chainsaw and what I will do is, is just simply connect the dots. I will go from this wall behind me to this to the next one and beyond and then I'll show you how we uh, put the wire in the wall, how we secure it and how it's done. I, uh, I just started cutting across outside of where we're actually going to be showing you today and I just wanted to point out that everywhere there's a web it says in this particular case we're using fox blocks. They, Every ICF form will mark their webs or their studs, or say fox blocks every eight inches. Try not to lay out your box on a web. You can, you can cut through the web, it's fine, it's just a pain. But 
lay them out between it. You're, you're, you can lay it anywhere on the wall. You're not married to stud spacing like traditional framing. So in this case, this is where the master bedroom, the, the king size bed will be. So we laid it out on either side and we can put them exactly behind the nightstands or whatever will be beside the bed. Instead of having to block out to get them exactly where we want them, we can put them anywhere. So real quick, I'm going to start cutting and I'll show you kind of how that goes. Okay, everybody, now we have all of our cuts made. We've got our gang box hole. And all you gotta do is take a screwdriver and pop it out. Okay, guys, real quick, before I run the wire, I wanted to show you how these boxes fit in. Um, you got the single gang box, and once you clear it to the concrete, it fits in nice and snug, and it's sticking out just enough for the sheetrock, and you're done. So I'll show you now how we run the wire. And there's a lot of times if you're chainsaw, if you're not, if you don't cut quite that pretty, you can take some of the scrap and poke it in on the sides to hold it while you're doing the wiring. Like I said, there's a way we secure all this. I'm going to get to in just a second. Okay, guys, uh, got my got my groove here. I've got my 14-2 Romex. I'm in a bedroom, so I like to use a speed square. Other people use other things. Uh, you can use a sharpie, anything. I don't want to use anything sharp like a flathead screwdriver because I don't want to damage the Romex. But look, you can just slide it back here. That's going plenty far back to be behind any screws that you might try to drive into the wall. Not to mention, if you were trying to drive a drywall screw into that web, there's no web right there. So you wouldn't catch anything to grab to get to the wire. So that's kind of nice. And I'm going to leave it hanging out just a little bit until I get the other wire run over here. And then I will put the box on, slide the whole thing in, and then we will move on to the next box. The wire run both directions. Uh, this bedroom is just daisy chains from one to the other. I'm just trying to show you one box right now. We'll uh, go ahead and place the wires in the box. And then we're going to poke it in like so. Now that the wires are in there, if I can push them on back, kind of relieve the pressure on the box. And as you see now, I've, I've pushed it in there a few times. Now it's a little loose. I'll, uh, I'll just use a couple scraps of foam to kind of square it up for a second. It's long enough to... Uh, there we go. Now it's in there just right. Okay, now I'm going to show you the last thing in just a second, how we secure this permanently. Obviously, that is not the actual answer. All right, guys, um, the last phase of securing wire or PEX pipe that's going for your plumbing, anything like that, is foaming everything in. This will be your best friend when you're doing ICF, whether it be our uh, joints where the layout comes together. You foam everything, you seal it up, no concrete leaks out while you're pouring, it's, it's really handy. But then around your windows, you can really tighten up a house with one of these. If you buy the disposable cans for like five bucks at Home Depot, these are about 15, but you can turn them off so you get every drop of it. They're way better value than just buying the one you have to use up in five minutes or it goes bad. So it's all we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna, oh, going a little fast there. We can sand that right off when we're done. We're going to go all the way around here. I'll slow down a little bit, try to make it prettier. Okay. Like I said, we will remove all the excess with a box knife. It takes like two seconds. But this is what's going to hold that wire back into the wall. It, it kind of stays on its own. But this is uh, your belt and suspenders. This is the fail safe that protects the wire, keeps it, keeps it enclosed. So we just do that to the next one, go around that box. And this whole process, uh, most of the time the electricians will, I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, but most of the time the electricians will do the entire house and just do this all at once. It's, it takes them like an hour to run through a normal size house um, and foam it all up. Like I said, you just take a, we have a rasp 
or a screwdriver or anything, just knock off all the, where I get a little excited and use too much foam. But that's, that's it, guys. That is effectively ready for sheetrock. You do that to the whole house, and, you know, you've got a fortress, and that's how you run wire in ICF.